So before getting stuck into this discussion, I have a story to tell first. A while back, I got myself a physical copy of Bugsnack. I was keen on seeing what the game was like, as the cover of the game was the feature that got my attention. An unfortunate error did come with it, and I was well aware of the situation before purchasing it. The physical copy was a pre-owned version of the game I bought at EB Games. And what happened after putting the disc in the console? You guessed it, the game wouldn't work. It came up with an error and my console started to make weird noises. I ended up placing the disc back into the case and never touching it again because I did not want to risk the potential damage I could cause to my PlayStation 5 console. And these are not cheap to get by the way. Many months later, I upgraded my PlayStation Plus membership just to check out some free games I could download and to receive a platinum trophy of course, and believe it or not, Bug Snack was in that category. And this brings us to today. And after trying out some Bug Snack, here's what I think about it. Bug Snack is a single player adventure video game where you roam around in several areas and catch as many different types of bugs as you see fit. This game can be similar to Pokemon, where you explore and try to catch different types of creatures, big or small but Bugsnack does have its own style to make it stand out. And even though this is a game made for pretty much all ages, as I went deeper into the story and check out the internet revolving around this game, I accidentally traversed deep into a rabbit hole. I came out of that hole realizing that Bugsnack features some very dark horror without even telling you it's dark. And I'll discuss that later on. For now, the game story begins with an explorer named Lizberg, along with her love, Egabel. She and her followers have built a small settlement on Snacktooth Island, an island that is entirely filled with bug snags, which are half bugs and half snacks. Lizberg invites the main protagonist to come to Snacktooth Island to document their amazing discovery. You play as a reporter, and everything is not as it seems after arriving on the island. You hear Lizberg has gone out on an adventure, but it turns out she is missing. And to make matters worse, everyone left the settlement to build a home elsewhere. You end up meeting Philbo, the appointed mayor, and after helping him out, you two try your absolute best to bring everyone back to the settlement, interview them to gather information, and try to find Lizberg. I really love the story here. It's not the best story I've seen in a video game, but man, this one really catches my attention. Every character is likable, and I can appreciate that they all have their own personality and conflicts when approaching a daunting situation. They act just like actual people in real life. They are a group who hate and like one another, and for good reason too, but what I enjoy about them the most is that they all have their own screen time. Not one overshadows each other, and they all have character development. And you definitely see that transition come into play when heading into Act 3 of the story. My favourite characters have to be Wombus, Gramble, and Chanlo, because, well, look at him, he's a very big boy. As far as gameplay is concerned, and as I have stated earlier in the video, you run around in areas, collect bug snacks, and complete quests for those characters. Not everyone will come back when first being asked, so you will have to help them out before they return. The majority of the side quests will feature you finding the little critters and giving them away to those characters so they can consume them. Yeah, did I mention this game can be dark? When feeding them, you have the option to change their appearance. So for example, you can change one of Philbo's arms into a strawberry. Oh, this? Pretty neat, huh? It's a side effect of eating bug snacks. You can also change their legs, head, face, and their skin as well. I do love how every strategy to capture bug snags is different and makes you really think hard on how to capture them. You start with the snack trap gadget, which helps you collect them more easily, and you also have your net if some of the bug snacks can fit into the snack trap. As you progress into the game, you'll unlock more gadgets to use against the tougher bug snacks to collect, like the Buggy Bowl, and that name instantly reminds me of Captain Buggy from One Piece. And when using the laser, the ball will follow the laser beam wherever it goes. 
You also have the launch pad, which sends yourself, the snack trap, and bug snacks flying up in the air. It's also helpful when trying to reach further away gaps. And the snack grabbler, a tool to grab objects and bug snacks very far away, and those gadgets are just to name a few. I've noticed I'm saying the word bug snacks too often, and you could do a drinking challenge where you can drink every time I say the word bug snacks, but please don't. The last thing I want for you is to see you drunk as hell and waking up with a massive hangover. I enjoy collecting the bug snags, and the cool thing about them is they communicate based on their name. Bunger is my favorite bug snack in the game. I mean, just look at it. It's freaking adorable as it charges directly at me and oh shit, run! I also like Bobsicle due to that bug saying its name over and over, almost turning into a rap song. Another cool thing about them is after catching one of them, they'll go on to pronounce their name to you. And I think it's a cute touch the developers added. <laughs> After catching one, they'll be added to your journal. The journal keeps track on how many bugs you have collected in a bugopedia, checking out the map, and looking at several quests you have to complete. The level structure is really solid. You have areas to explore, like a jungle, beach, desert, mountain, and snow. There's always something to do in each location, and it never got boring for me. Even the soundtrack is really good too. I find myself bopping and humming along to the music wherever I wander around. Playing through the game from start to finish was a joy for me, and receiving a platinum trophy was enjoyable as well. It was difficult to find any complaints I had about Bugsnags because I just had a blast here. I suppose if I really had to break it down to just nitpicks alone, I would say this game is not for everybody, as it's not your typical first slash third person shooter with a bunch of battle passes, and yeah, it's not the most realistic graphics in the world, as its design is cartoony, still, I do think it works well here for this type of media. And I guess to wrap up my small nitpicking, I'm not a fan of the font the game presents, as it is pretty childish to me. And this is coming from someone who used to have Comic Sans in the thumbnails, that was a very weird period. But take these small feedbacks with a grain of salt. The negative feedback did not distract me from my overall experience at all. Bugsnack does feature boss battles, and unfortunately, I forgot to record them, as I thought I had more than enough footage, but as it turned out, I missed the boss fights. But anyway, I enjoyed the bosses here. Each of them had a strategy for using your gadgets, so you really had to think to yourself about how to approach them. They're pretty creative overall. As for the dark, mysterious message hidden within Bugsnack, I had to come to realize that while this game is not a full-on horror game, it does have a bit of that psychological horror feel to it. And bear in mind that this is just my theory on the whole discussion. So when talking with these characters, if there's one thing they all have in common is that they all talk about how great Bug Snacks is. And once they eat them, they can't get enough of them for some reason. And they always want more and more Bug Snacks. Mm. Tastier than I thought. Now, I want to eat those darn shish bugs. That's honestly on par if someone were to take drugs or alcohol, for example. And the more people take them, the more addicted they'll become. And over time, their personality begins to change. And that's the same with bug snacks, as you witness characters arguing with each other and being defensive. And with the topic of addiction, the more you consume a product, the bigger harm it can do to your body, and it could change your overall appearance. Just like with Bug Snack. After eating one of them, their looks will alter and they'll never look the same again. I think the message the game is trying to present from my point of view is that you try your best to help them out, make them realize their addictions, and hopefully they'll overcome their addiction to Bug Snack. And sure, they may never look like the same people as before, but they'll be healed from the process, and everyone will do their best to better themselves, one day at a time. It is a pretty sensitive topic to talk about, but that's the message I got when playing through this game. 
But I think despite the hidden dark psychological horror within Bugsnag, I absolutely had fun with this game. I didn't think I would like this game at first glance, but I am glad I gave it a shot, and I would honestly say it's up there in my top 10 favourite PlayStation 5 video games. I enjoyed the gadgets to use, I like the different amount of bug snags to witness, and the soundtrack is great. If you haven't played this game yet, I 100% encourage you to try it out. Even if it may not be your type of style, who knows? It just might be a video game that'll be worth the time. Just make sure that you enter the game with an empty stomach because there's plenty of bug snags to go around. But anyway, that's going to wrap up this video. I thank you all so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a like, share the video, and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And as always, my name is Justin Hurst, telling you to keep calm and keep playing video games.